Well, hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to another episode, episode 5 of our Broken Sword Let's Play series. We're playing Shadow of the Templars, the original game, but the Director's Cut Edition released 10 years ago. So we've just completed another part of Nico's adventures. We're now back with George as he's dropping in the Nico's apartment. And let's see what happens in today's episode. <laughs> The woman was doing something with a pair of needles that couldn't be described as knitting. So what could it be described as, Georgie boy? All right, let's go over and have a chat. Oh, hi. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good. It only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. Who's that guy with the bike walking past? Anyway, uh, let's ask her about Nico. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me in the apartment block across the street. The door isn't locked, but you'll need to give it a gentle nudge. It sticks, you see, because of the damp. The landlord said he'd fix it before winter sets in. He's been saying that for three years. Global warming for you, I guess. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating. It's a struggle to keep warm. Winter the only is reason coming. I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that one. Too proud, if you ask me. I don't think George likes some of the information Have you seen heard, anyone uh... out here watching Mademoiselle Collard's apartment? Yes, I have. A strange man. Tall and thin as a broomstick. He kept his face hidden, but I saw his eyes peering from evil little slits. How was he dressed? A long brown raincoat with an hat. Or like Humphrey Bogart? Yes, but he didn't have Bogart's charisma. Besides, this guy looked like he needed a toilet. <laughs> you never saw Bogart clenching his buttocks like that. I guess you did not. Is there anything else you can tell me about Mademoiselle Collard? No, monsieur. Okay, what else are we going to ask about? I'm going to show her the nose. Do you recognize this nose? No, monsieur. Well, that was a fruitful bit of conversation. What can you tell me about this tissue? Nothing. <laughs> okay, fabric? What can you tell me about this material? It's a very expensive piece of cloth, monsieur. Okay. What do you make of this tool? Is it something a dentist would use? No, it's for raising manhole covers. For How could she not know that? Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Ooh, I've heard that before. Thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. Oh, I see. Uh, she's like one of those Monty Python cheese shop. I've Purveyors of finest cheese doesn't actually want to sell it. Going on a long journey. My oh my, what a surprise! Can you tell me anything I don't already know? Okay, George. How does this fortune telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. She's a smart TV, then. That's what she's saying. Can you really foretell the future? 
Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people, I have no problem. But when I try to see what might happen to me, nothing. That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. Alright, I guess we're done. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Yes, because we're going into the apartment and we're probably going to come out. It again. was the door to Nico's apartment. Nice observation, George. Alright, let's go in and see what we get here. Remembering the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently just above the lock. Hi. Bonjour. Well, that I'm was quick. You could make it, monsieur. Uh, please, uh, call me George. Let yourself Hi. in, George. I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers underneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck. Hard work, I'd call it. What happened? My editor told me to drop the story. Can you believe it? Don't take but it so literally, George. That. Oh, no. I'm going to find out what's behind these killings. It just doesn't add up. It almost feels like some sort of conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious, or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. <laughs> well said, George. All right. Tell me more about yourself. <laughs> There's nothing much to tell. Well, how'd you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought me my first camera. I was eight, and my parents had just split up. Did you live with your father? Yes. My mother went off with her new boyfriend. I didn't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Even Papa though we just found out he was involved in some That's shady business in North Africa in the 60s. Did you learn about photography at college? God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel That explains hair. a lot. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arno Bellotta, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it, millions of housewives literally speeding their butts off. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. Interesting She's turn of phrase. She was led to his death by a snowman. What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. How did he die? At the hands, or should I say flippers, of a giant emperor penguin. A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. I had been about like to add mine to the list, but stopped myself. I really didn't want to have to explain to George about my father's involvement with Cachon. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you this, I will not be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance for a big break. Or an early death. Okay, well, hopefully not, George. Okay, let's show Nicole our items. This is the tool I used to get into the sewers. Fascinating, George. You're not interested, are you? Oh, of course I am. I think it was very brave of you to go down those sewers. Yeah? Well, it was kind of scary, but... Well, I had a job to do. Good old George. I found this false nose in the sewer. Hey, we see the nose on the table, the but not the manhole nose. opener. Don't be cross, George. It says La Rite du Monde. Masks and costumes. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. All right, let's show her the lovely tissue. I found this tissue down the sewer. 
That's disgusting, George. No, no, no. I think the stuff on it is grease paint, like actors use or clowns. It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. Okay, the lady was not impressed. Finally, the cloth. I found a piece of material near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George. It's an enlargement I made. Oh, so another clue. Look what that guy is wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's that right. George's neck. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his right cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Or a crescent moon. So interesting coincidence How with the photographer. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. I have to go. Okay, I'll see you later. All right, she's given us some work to do. Come on, we'll have a quick chat with the flower lady before oh, we move hi. on. Bonjour, monsieur. How's your girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend. Maybe not yet, but I see your palms entwined in the future. Maybe for I doubt it. a whole series of games and adventures. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Oh, what a hunk. He's a killer. I can see that. His eyes say it all. Okay, thank see you, you for the information. That's right, monsieur, you will. Lovely say de monde. This is where Nicole centers the costume shop. All right. This is it like an episode of Mr. Ben? Was Mr. Ben, wasn't it? Anyway, let's have a look what we got here. It was an antique phonograph, the kind you have to wind by hand. Okay, well, um, I think we figured that one out already. The guy's spoon-shaped face was mournful and humorless. He looked like a vegetarian in a slaughterhouse. <laughs> Interesting comparison there, George. Excuse me. Bonjour, monsieur. Please, come in. Welcome. We already did. Leave the mundane world behind. For in these four walls, fantasy is king. Uh, I don't want a costume. Didn't you ever dress up when you were a child? Not that I remember. Incredible. Come on, George, You'll I'm be sure you did. Next that you never shared your elder sister's lingerie. I don't have a sister, and I think I'd look pretty silly. Okay, well, this here. conversation has gone to some strange places of already. How can I help you? Well, we came here about the nose, didn't we? Do you want so. this red nose back? Not after it's been worn, thank you. Okay, I thought we were going to ask him to confirm that this was bought at his store, but okay, let's go with the clown, clown picture. From you. Oui, monsieur. I do not see how I can help. Don't you keep a record of costumes that you've rented out? Of course, monsieur, but... Uh... Well, then, I'd like to check your records. Give me the names of everyone who's rented a clown suit. Impossible. There are too many. Hmm. Have you heard of a man named Plantile? I do not recall any one of that name. Okay, let's show him the photograph. Do you recognize this man? Oui, monsieur. I sold him some grease paint. Ooh, grease paint. Does this dirty tissue mean anything to you? Hmm. Let me smell that. Bestheimer's number seven, white pancake. Theatrical grease paint, right? Oh, oui, monsieur. La creme de la creme of Cespian accoutrement. Have you sold any of it recently? Yes, two can. Okay, interesting, interesting. Everybody else is disgusted by the tissue, but of course this guy knows his business. Do you recognize this man? Ah, oui. He was ill this morning. That is the man to whom I sold the grease paint. I remember the scar on his face. He chose two costumes. Bozo the clown and Seamus the pixie. A Seamus pixie. the pixie? Very is that who we saw cycling past Green Nicole's apartment, I wonder? a taffeta lining. He gave me his name as Monsieur Khan. 
What Gotta show him this tool. This tool. To Nothing, Monsieur. Right then. Thanks for your help, buddy. My pleasure, Monsieur. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Huh? Oh, well, okay. <laughs> he got you there, George. What are you trying to do? Kill me? You did not find it amusing? I never saw the funny side of electroshock therapy. <laughs> Come on, George, don't overreact. A gift? Do I need a license? No, but I give you a word of warning, monsieur. What? Remember to switch it off before you visit the toilet. <laughs> okay, good word of warning. All right. So... We've got the name of the Monsieur Khan, so maybe it's time to call the tailor again, because we called him before, but we never really got anywhere. I remember this in the original game, kept coming back to the workman's phone a couple of times. And there we go. Of course, if I hadn't played this game before... I may well have now been struggling, Hello? wondering what Who to is do. This? Mr. Todrick? Oh, it's you again. What now? The man I'm looking for is called Khan. He bought a suit from you, remember? Mr. Khan. Yes, I remember him. Yes, I delivered the suit to his hotel. The Hotel Ubu. Uh, I uh, don't remember the room number. It was upstairs. The second room on the right-hand side of the corridor. Thanks, Todrick. That's all I wanted to know. Now I've got you, Mr. Clown. Okay, we've got a hotel name then, so... I guess that's the next part of our adventure. Yes, it's opened up a new point on the map for us just over here, the Hotel Ubu. In the days before Uber, there was Ubu. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I think as we've arrived at a new location, that's a suitable point to wind up today's episode. So next time we will investigate the hotel and see what we can find, see if we can get past these two rather nasty looking gentlemen at the door. But for now, I'm Dodgy Gamer. Thank you ever so much for watching. Please like this video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I will see you again soon. Thank you.